couple bets in the Michigan Ohio State game. I do like Michigan. I think Michigan is likely to win more likely than the price. I would like to bet minus three, and we're so close. Uh, I have not bet them yet. Three would definitely be a bet. Three and a half's like probably good, but I, I I'm, we're so close. There actually is a couple threes on the board, but like I like three. Honestly, what I've really talked myself into the last couple days, uh, I really like the over in this game, and this comes down to a couple things. The total in the last two Michigan Ohio State games, and obviously C.J. Stroud was Ohio State's quarterback, and and you may have heard you may have heard of him. He's electric, and now it's Kyle McCord. So I understand that. But I think there is something to how teams end up kind of fitting together and the types of games that they play, regardless of who the quarterbacks are. The total two years ago in this game was 64 and a half, and the total last year was 56. And the total this year is 45 and a half. Like, it definitely should be less because McCord is playing and Stroud is not. Should it be this much less? I guess that's my question. And I, I don't think so. One other thing I think Ohio State has going for them, like if you want to make a bull case for them, and I do think... Like, I, I have a bet on this player. Travion Henderson has been absolutely fantastic since he came back from his injury. Now, he didn't play in this game last year, and he didn't play against Penn State, which would be two games you'd look at to see kind of what this game is going to be like. And his presence, like, what does it do for Ohio State? Gives him the opportunity to make explosive plays, which they're going to have a lot of trouble doing down the field. You know, probably double cover Marvin Harrison Jr. And it's Kyle McCord on the road. That's really tough. Travion Henderson gives you the ability to get explosives in the game. I think that helps the over a lot too. Just the way these teams tend to fit together. I know they both played play, play Penn State. It was brutal low scoring. I know Ohio State went to Notre Dame. It was really low scoring. I don't think that's how these teams fit together. I think Travion Henderson playing is a big deal too. So I like Michigan in the game to win, waiting for three. Really like the over. And I played the over on Travion Henderson's rushing yards, which is in the mid 70s uh, in terms of the game. So hoping for like a high scoring Michigan win which would be pretty similar to how the last couple games played out. A very interesting betting market. I, I'll be honest, like, I didn't expect this. I don't, you do really good ratings. Maybe you thought we were going to get a market that, that's that's this tight. But the look-aheads were kind of like in that six, six and a half, five mm -hmm. and a half range. And we're, we're a couple days away from the game. Michigan hold on for dear life as a three and a half point favor. There's a couple threes on the board. The total is 46. Uh, any bets that you have for this game? Any thoughts that you have? I have bets on Ohio State here. It's nothing major, nothing, you know, it's going to change my uh, financial perspective, but I'm definitely on Ohio State here. Look at the last two games. I remember, I'm not going to go into the Connor Stallions. I'm not going to go into, you know, Harbaugh not being on the sidelines, but they're done throwing the ball. J.J. McCarthy has either not been allowed to throw the ball against Penn State or he's been extremely ineffective against Maryland. Four turnover-worthy plays against the Terrapins' vaunted secondary. I mean, that's a red flag in itself, and this team – has not been able to create explosives all year. They are just Blake Corum off tackle. That's all they are right now. If Ohio State can figure that out, then they're going to be fine on the defensive side of the ball. But my entire handicap came down to what is Ohio State's offense? It's a one-trick pony. It's Kyle McCord to Marvin Harrison, the best route runner coming to the NFL. So when you go into the uh, route tree that Marvin Harrison runs, it's all crossers and it's hitch routes. Well, I went and dove into what Michigan is doing defending those, and from a success rate and an explosive perspective, they cannot defend Hitch whatsoever. So I expect to see Marvin Harrison come back on a couple throws to Kyle McCord, and uh, you know if Michigan doesn't have two guys right there, then it's going to be curtains. So I like Ohio State. They have the more explosive unit. I don't know what's going on with this Michigan offense. They have no explosiveness on the ground or through the air. J.J. McCarthy's not even being allowed to throw. So give me Ohio State here this home for us Kanish because like I know we do this as shtick sometimes like obviously Kanish is a big sports better he's also like a huge sports fan like all of us are and he's a Detroit yeah. guy and he loves the Lions he loves the he University of Michigan winning. I think he uh, thinks Ohio State's winning the game I it sounds like maybe doesn't maybe he's just like very very concerned that it's a possibility like be honest with us like one to ten on the sports fan nervousness scale here of what you will be coming up on Saturday with Michigan and Ohio State then we'll get to some more bets no I'm, I'm gonna be and listen for, for the majority of the season, this was at like, and I'm not joking, like probably in the three to five range. It, it's approaching an eight or a nine at this point. I mean, this is a pro, like, this is the least confident I've been in this game throughout the year. Uh, and, and it's unfortunately the game's happening this week. So uh, I would have loved if they played eight weeks ago. I think Michigan would have killed them. Now, uh, not so much. So, you know, timing wise, our ball's not there. There's a little bit of panic in Ann Arbor land, so uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's going to be a sweat, boys, uh, and probably one that, that goes down to the final series of plays. This is 
this is freaking war and peace for the Green Bay Packers, this injury report. And it's like every single name is like an impactful player. So like I'm going to have to go through a couple of these here because the game's coming up tomorrow. So for people that don't know, Luke Musgrave placed on IR today by the Green Bay Packers, their rookie tight end. Um, Josiah DeGuara, their other tight end, is listed as doubtful. What does this mean? We'll talk about it later this hour with the props. Uh, Tucker Craft. So, so like you know, nine Robert's different grandson. jokes. Right. Yes, or yes. like, yes. I mean, you know, macaroni and cheese. Uh, so Tucker Craft. Macaroni will be and cheese head? Yeah. Mm. Oh, good job. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, that should be his nickname. Um, doing show, Tucker doing shows on X. Yeah. We will so we'll talk about like the props here Game with Tucker rigged. Craft who will, who will be who will be Green Bay starting tight ends in the game coming up tomorrow. Aaron Jones is out. If you feel bad for him and you'd like to send him well wishes for the holiday, that cell phone number 281-330-8004. Uh, it was way funnier that time than it normally is. It was really funny. All right, thanks. Uh also for Green Bay, uh, yeah. A.J. Dillon's listed as typical. questionable. Yeah. Eman Emmanuel Wilson placed on IR also. Like, this is going to be like Patrick Taylor might be Green Bay starting running back in this game if Dillon doesn't go. I think we expect Dillon will play in the game and they'll shoot him up. I guess it's a groin injury. That sounds painful. And Dontavian <laughs> Wicks. Oh, <God. laughs> Dontavian Wicks is a couple different injuries here. Like, if he if he yeah. doesn't play, I mean, like, I don't even know what they're going to be rolling out there on offense in this game. doesn't mean they can't win or cover. Just, like, they're up against a little, a little bit. What um, is this price? Uh, okay. Every, everything else that you would think is moot, like Jets are starting Tim Boyle, like Gino is going to play hurt, like all these things, like great, like the market's moving as you'd expect. I don't even like those bets a lot. Like here, it's what do people know what the starting 11 is for the Green Bay offense? Like, nah, still well, seven and a half. It's good. I, I, I think that, and like, you're right, because even when we assume things are going to be the case, like once it's officially official and it's announced, yeah. then like there would normally be a move. I guess like my one point would be, and like I, I just said something that runs contrary to what I'm about to say. But, like, we knew Musgrave was going to be out. We knew Jones was going to be out. Like, Dylan's kind of a new one. But, like, all this stuff with Green Bay is, like, not unexpected. I think was kind of, like, expected and maybe, like, none of this is earth-shattering. But I am surprised that, like, with the official announcement that, like, that nothing's happened yet. Maybe we'll see that happen, Ken, as we approach kickoff coming up tomorrow in the early game. Also, like, just, like, assuming rational coaching, which I don't want to do in this game. And that's not even a shot at Matt LaFleur. I just don't want to do it. Because, like, it, 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 sometimes it doesn't work out. And, like, I hate myself more when that happens than I, anything else. Like, they, they shouldn't run the ball the entire game. They, like, Love should throw the ball 60 times in the game. And I don't think they're going to do that. If they do, maybe they'd have some success. Anyway, uh, Cowboys and the Commanders. Do you remember the name of the supervillain that uh, that killed Superman before he came back? Sure do. Doomsday. Yeah. Hashtag, yeah. hashtag doomsday here. I should I have been like, and that, of course, was Lex Luthor. <laughs> yeah, so are, I can't even. Like, is there? Can Can you name one other like Superman bad guy other than Lex Luthor and Doomsday? No. I can't. Oh, uh, General Zod was that the guy from the second movie or whatever? Yeah. I had to, like this is why like DC's unless they want to sponsor us. That's why DC's so lame. Like yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, Superman's the best. Also, like all of his villains are terrible. Anyway, uh, Cowboys and the Commanders. Dallas bet out to 12 and a half. So we haven't hit 13, but we're at 12 and a half now. This was 11. Total in the game sitting at 48 and a half. Um, we, we do think Antonio Gibson might play in the game. Going to be a game time decision. Emmanuel Forbes is out. And also when he plays, does he? 10 Cowboys and Commies, what do you got? See, like, this is a game where, like, I I agree with this price. Like, I yeah, I, I think they're very likely to win the game by about this margin. They've run it up against a bunch of really bad opponents. And Washington, because, like, I, people, I, I've had the same thought process. I go, well, wait, like, Washington maybe could be competitive. Like, they kept it, you know, they almost beat the Eagles. You know, like, they played some competitive games so far this year. But, like, now Chase Young and Sweat aren't on the team. And this is a, it's a terrible offensive line. And again, at both at the line of scrimmage on both sides, this is a disaster of a game. Like this is like Micah Parsons, 17 sacks. This is like the Cowboys are going to be able to do whatever they want. Dak's going to have a ton of time to throw in the game. Cowboys have been passing a lot. They, they did not have a great offensive performance against Carolina. They were able to win anyway because Carolina is so bad, but like Dak didn't throw for a lot of yards. CD didn't catch a ton of passes. Um, 
could could see that being different here. I don't I don't really have a set of bets that I love here. You I think I think you're going to do a bet I really like in the prop king segment. You could just do it there and I, the, the player will not be a surprise to anybody. A player that we bet to win offensive player of the year. Uh could see him having a big game and Dak having a big game. If there were props on Micah Parsons to do crazy stuff in this game, I'd bet him. Um God, if there was a prop on him to like score a touchdown in this game, if it, if the price was really big, I would consider betting it. There I think they're going to run it up, but the spread implies that that's what they're going to do, which is why I don't want to have a bet on the game. Like, I just agree with this, and I, I don't give Washington a very big chance to win. The Seahawks and the 49ers, where Pete Carroll saying Geno Smith is going to play in the game. Uh, no Kenneth Walker, though, for uh, for Seattle. Uh, Seattle is expected to get back, though, uh, Jamal Adams in the game. Niners, in between a 7 and a 7.5 point road favorite. The total in the game is 44. Okay, so everybody's got column B, and you've got Lions one and a half. Uh, now you're going to write San Francisco one, one and a half in the same column, and you're going to feel great about it. Uh, if you want to put Iowa in the column, great. I I agree with Colin and – like, everybody likes Nebraska. I don't know if I'm going to tease Iowa, but, like, these two – like, I feel really confident that Lions 49ers teams are going to win more often than the price that you get. Now, I'll just, I'll add this real quick. I don't have any other bets on this game. Like, I, I think it's fine. Uh, and we could do Black Friday too. If you're, if you are betting at a sports book where the teaser price is really bad, like you're paying like minus 160 or something for like a two team six pointer, just compare the price you get for money line parlaying the two teams to the six point teaser and take the better price whatever it is. Like, even if you only have access to one book, we want you to bet at BetMGM. But if you only have one book, maybe they're not in your state, whatever. Like, what's the money line parlay for Detroit, San Francisco? Is that actually better? Because some places are jacking up the prices on two-team six-pointers. Is it actually better to money line parlay both of them than the two-team six-pointer them because of, like, what that pays? Just, like, shop it and just, like, bet the better one. Whatever the better one is, that would be my advice. I just don't want people, like, paying, like, through the nose for teasers when there's, like, a better option available or whatever. So just want to add that. Uh, I, I don't have any bets on the game besides, again, teasing now now that the number is going to be above seven like when whale came on on monday and he was like it's gonna be six and a half i'm gonna love san francisco in the game now that it's seven and a half i'd feel like the best course of action is to tread lightly that's just one from one of my favorite episodes of breaking bad the best course of action is like ken said to tease the san francisco 49ers and just like really enjoy your thanksgiving 